hello everybody again. So this summary session is not going to give a summary of the summary of the summaries. So uh, what I actually would, or what we are presenting here, next slide please, is that we would like to show uh, there were quite a few activities already being dealt with within the 14 sessions for 10 different topics related to test guideline and guidance document development. But there are a few other test guideline and guidance document developments ongoing at OECD level or pre-OECD level. And we would like to cover those just to wrap up and show the whole uh, suite of activities around this uh, kind um, of test guideline development. So here you see that we have the different sections at OECD level, section one, physical chemical properties. And for example, the last one is at WNT level, the WNT point one point eight. that was the dustiness, which Jacques Bouillard was presenting. And so you see here a, a list of these activities. And with the next slides, that will be, I will go through pretty fast. And um, this is mainly to show you the activity, to make you aware of the activity, to present you who is the contact point for this activity. This is not meant to be to give to you a full service and explanation of what is actually done. If you have questions, the slides will be made available after this session and after this workshop. So you will see this overview as well. And you see the contact on the slides, as you see here, the contact for Juan Riegosintes for the volume specific surface area. And so you can contact them directly thereafter. And again, this is only to make you aware of this activity. And this will come from different European projects. On the left hand side, this one is from the Gopro Nano project and there it is class 2.4 where the topic is the development of scientific protocols underpinning the future development of a harmonized test guideline for volume specific surface area measurement. Next slide. slide. So you will see this type of slide uh, for each of the projects we discuss again and again and again. So you see on the left hand side the start of the OECD process and on the right hand side the end of the OECD process. The whole process, which Mar did not explain because it would be much too much uh, going into detail of this, is from the left to the right in different steps at OECD. It is always indicated where we are and at the point, and you see here the indication that the project for the volume specific uh, surface area is in 2021 at OECD WNT level. And you see that 2021, uh, there will it will be at the double, uh, uh, double UNT 34 or 34, then presented and finalized. So the next slide, please. The test guideline uh, development uh, started as uh, a long time ago, and from May to September 2020, in the first step, the first interlaboratory uh, testing was ongoing. There is October to November 2020, the assessment of results and discussion on future testing needs. Optional second foreseen in the future until December, if needed, uh, 20 or March 20, from March, uh, December 20 to March 21. Elaboration of the information dossier and then information dossier and first draft of test guidelines sent to WNT as said, either end uh, of 21 or by 22. Next slide. We come to the next uh, project, which in this case is led by uh, the Swiss, Sabine Fry. And this task is the applicability of the guide test guideline 44.2 in vitro skin sensitization for nanomaterials. Next slide. Um, here again, you see that we are in the block in the middle of the OECD, OECD WNT phase for this project. And next slide. For these next steps is finding the consensus for the nanomaterial to be tested, which has been finalized by uh, December last year. September this year, more or less finalized is the report on experimental outcomes and the consensus for recommendations for the future revision of the test on 442D. And December 21, uh, this will be uh, for validation adaptation being sent to OECD with a detailed review paper being published or being submitted for publication um, in uh, March 22. Next slide. We 
come to a third project by GoFornano, which is ongoing, which is led by Maria Luisa Fernandez Cruz and from Spain. And this is the study on bioaccumulation of nanomaterials in fish, which I mentioned as one uh, of the processes using and depending on the solubility and dissolution testing, uh, and which was part uh, then uh, participating in the discussions there as well. Next slide. Here we see that we are also at the OECD WNT phase, which is uh, one uh, which is at the phase um, for finalizing. And um, next slide. Uh, we see that in April, it started for some times in 2018 in April. Uh, the leads were agreed. Generation of data was in 2020 to 21. Preparation of the new draft GD specifically on applying TT 305 to nanomaterials is foreseen for 22 in April. And the draft CD circulated at WTMN uh, and later on 22 at uh, WNT level is foreseen for the end of uh, uh, 22, the year 22. Next slide, please. We, oh, that was somehow reformed, or uh, this should be not a Goff for Nano slide. To be clear here, this one is from the EU project RISCON, which you see in the upper right corner. And uh, in this uh, here, the contact is uh, Elisa Ruben Pran, and the project lead is there with Maria Duzinska. And in the topic is the colony, colony forming efficiency CFC testing. Next slide. Here we see that this is from RISCON, which is a project starting about one and a half years ago. Or nearly two years ago, they um, are in a phase uh, shortly before submitting uh, the project proposal uh, uh, to the OECD to the WPMN, as you see indicated on the left hand side with the blue uh, arrow. Next um, slide, please. The step is here that in March 2020, there was already work ongoing, so they already started with the work. The SOP was agreed, a first interlocutor. Interlaboratory study was performed as a pre validation evaluation in September 2020. And for 21 and thereafter, there are foreseen second interlaboratory testing, validation report preparation, and then the validation report being made available and submitted for, uh, for publication, which then leading in, at the end of 2021 as the first draft to be submitted to the WNT provided that it is accepted as an OECD project uh, as well, uh, not at all, uh, provided that this is in time also for the acceptance as an uh, OECD project. Next slide, please. This one again, it's not a go for nano, please cross that out in your mind. This one is again a risk zone project. In, in this case, it is led and coordinated by Maria Duzinska, as you see below for the content, uh, for the context. It's an zoom link in vitro comet assay for testing genotoxicity and oxidative damage. Next slide. And here the project has already started some time ago. You see it is still in uh, the submitting phase. Uh, it will be soon submitted to the OECD as a project proposal. Next slide. And here we see uh, the first interlaboratory study was performed or is performed just now in February 21 setting up controlling for possible interference of nanomaterials with assay and heat preparation on SOP. For March 21, there will be confirmation of SOP, and this all is supposed to end up in a first draft for a test guideline or guidance document at WNT at the end of 21, maybe a year later, because the submittance for the, to the WNT is only once per year, so we have to keep that in mind. So in my view, as far as I recall, I think this one is the last one. Next slide. It was the last one. These were five other ongoing OECD developments and points coming up for uh, activities or ongoing activities towards test guide and some guidance documents and maybe wrapping up and giving a more complete picture of what is ongoing in this area, which we as Nano Harmony see also as our task to keep people internationally informed on these kinds of activity. And also, as you see with the last two slides, as uh, being in the pre-project phase, already announcing here,
clear that these activities are ongoing and enabling uh, the participation, the international participation already at this phase 